Hello guys, today we have another mailbag video, this time it's from icstation.com and it is a DC to DC step up boost converter. So I'll show you how it works and then just to make things interesting we'll take a few uh, inexpensive components to the failure point and uh, we'll just see what happens. Before we do any testing here, the uh, heatsink for this module comes disconnected. So, first thing we'll have to do is just attach that to the top of these two transistors, I think they are. And something like that. All that's going to do is when those transistors are working hard, that's going to help dissipate the heat and give you a little bit more power. So. We let that uh, set there for a little while and I might just put something heavy on it and leave it to one side and then we'll be good to go. A module like this is usually fairly simple. Your input voltage comes in, it's uh, switched between a number of storage elements like capacitors and I don't know if that's a resistor or it's an inductor but um, it's usually something like capacitors and inductors to store your energy and then uh, that gives you a waveform uh, which uh, is built up to a higher voltage then you rectify it at the output to give you your DC output so it's something like that usually you have a loss of uh, energy as a result or a loss of power so uh, according to the specs for this one it's about 96% efficiency so from here to here about 4% of the power is lost which isn't really bad I don't think uh, the other stats for this uh, the input voltage uh, between 3 and 35 volts and 7 amps at the input, the output then between 3.5 and 35 volts and 6 amps at the output but uh, it's 75 watts is what uh, they've recommended it for so it's a 75 watt power supply so your 6 amps you couldn't have 35 volts at 6 amps because you'd be at like 200 watts that'd be, uh, it'd be a bit crazy so I'd say it's probably like maybe 11 or 12 watts or 11 or 12 volts at the output at 6 amps maybe maybe not uh, maybe it's a lower voltage uh, there's also short circuit protection up to uh, at 14 amps and uh, there's no reverse polarity protection so don't connect your positive and negative uh, backwards basically that's all that's in and that's pretty much all there is to it so what I'm gonna do is connect up a few of these banana jack things and uh, We'll hook it up to power supply and just test it out. Okay, so just to demonstrate, we have our power supply over here. That's outputting around 5 volts and it can supply, oh, I think, something like 5 amps. It's a pretty big power supply, so we're hardly going to uh, overload it anyway. Uh, this multimeter is showing us the current, and we have a 3K3 resistor on the output at the minute. So that's like 40 milliamps, not too big. Just uh, input voltage there 5.28 um, and on the oscilloscope we have the output voltage so we're about 18 volts there and if we look at this screen you can see 18.3 so it doesn't look like the in voltage is working for us There's in now. Okay, so about 5.1 it's reading, it's around about right. So there you go, that uh, little display seems to be working alright anyway. And we're at uh, 18 volts, so if we adjust potentiometer here, so you can see our voltage going up there. Up to 25 volts. There's 30. Bring this down a little. There's us up over 30, 36 volts. That looks to be around about it. So we're at 36 volts there. Uh, 
140 milliamps VT across our resistor. So, or I mean, 140 milliamps flow into the resistor. We've 36 volts across it, and it seems to be running all right. That's showing 36 as well. I think it's a little hard to see that display. 36.8, it's saying so. Roughly in the in the same ballpark. So let's roll it back down. That's the that's basically how it works. So let's roll it back down, and we'll start to put some some different loads on it. Okay, so let's have a look at what happens when you spec your components wrong. So first thing we have here is a resistor. Uh, this is a 10 ohm resistor. It's a quarter watt, and we're currently gonna supply it with uh, five volts. Like uh, there's 5.3, so we're about 5.3 volts across it. So 5.3 volts on 10 ohm resistor, it's about half an amp. So it's gonna be two and a half watts on a quarter watt resistor. So we're gonna see what happens when you make that mistake. So straight away we're up at 0.6 of an amp and you can probably see our resistor starting to smoke there. So that's because it's getting extremely hot. But if we up the voltage see our voltage is climbing up but yet there doesn't seem to be any effect why is that well look over here our resistor is pretty much disintegrated I think so we have no current flowing practically so that's what happens your resistor basically just burns away to nothing because all it is is a little wire film inside a uh, or well wrapped around a little core I suppose so if you touch that it'd probably be extremely hot because it's just after uh, the wire has just gone red hot until probably very little of it left so that's what happens when you spec a resistor incorrectly all right well here's sort of an example of how you might do it with a little bit more power uh, i thought these were 20 ohm resistors so i was going to end up with a, a kind of a high power 10 ohm resistor but actually i've ended up with a high power 20 ohm resistor but it's going to show us the same thing basically uh, what we have here actually I'm not sure what resistance these are there's something over 20 uh, because we've ended up roughly 20 ohms ok so I've two in series and then four sets of two in parallel so we're kind of spreading the power out over those four different routes so we should be able to get considerably higher uh, current from this setup let's take a look so we're a quarter of an amp as you would expect at the 5 ohms because when we had the 10 ohm resistor we had a uh, half of an amp uh, these are 1 watt resistors so they should be able to carry a lot more current so let's up the voltage so there's our half amp at the last time uh, we had smoke at this stage they're a little warm nothing major let's keep going and we're at 7 volts there's an amp now and still no smoke warm but not not crazy warm We're still okay I think one and a half amps at nearly 12 volts still a little warm nothing too crazy okay so it's not getting too fussed over uh, one and a half amps at 11 volts which will be what about 15 watts well, let's see if we can go a little bit more there's two amps 12 so that's what about 25 26 watts so 
it's definitely hot now we'll go to two and a half amps and that'll do us it's not smoking but I'd say it's way too hot to touch now at the minute we're up at 14.6 volts and two and a half amps so that's about 37 38 uh, watts so that's a fair bit of power to be putting out of the little module I think that's as far as I'll be able to go. I've no big power resistor, so I can't really test it out to its uh, 75 watt, you know, maximum rating or anything like that. But still, that's pretty impressive. And now you've got an idea how you might handle uh, higher powers with your resistors through using series and parallel configurations. Okay, well that's resistors. So what about a capacitor? Uh, this is very definitely a do not try this at home uh, kind of experiment. Uh, I think you can ignore this um, uh, little multimeter, little homemade kind of multimeter thing because uh, it's gone crazy volts. We're still getting 5 volts from, or still reading 5 volts at the input on this guy, and I'd say that's correct. That's just gone crazy. Batteries must be gone flat or something. So, uh, at the minute we have 5 volts on the output. Let's hook this up. So, 5 volts on the capacitor. If we wind this up, we should exceed the voltage of this 10 volt 100 microfarad capacitor Alright, well clearly when we went over voltage with our capacitor, we uh, it just blew up basically. That was at 12 volts and it's rated for 10, so let's try a, a 50 volt 100 microfarad capacitor. Should basically see nothing happen, so that's what we'll try. Okay, well here's our 50 volt capacitor. Uh, we're at 12 volts already, I didn't even bother dropping the voltage because I'm pretty sure nothing's going to happen here. So let's just run it up to the maximum here. So no problem there, up at the maximum of our little power supply. And capacitor's perfectly fine, it's well within its uh, specification, so nothing to worry about there. Okay, last thing, we're going to just see what happens. We have a little fan here, as you can see, one of the vanes on the fan is broken. This actually used to be the fan in the power supply that we're using at the minute, the big power supply in the background here. And there you can see the the new fan, which is basically a CPU fan. So what we're going to do here is hook it up. This is a 12 volt motor. So we'll put it going and just see at what voltage is it going to fail and how dramatically is it going to fail. All right, so I'll try and hold it in place and hopefully we'll see at what voltage the motor actually fails. So this is a 12 volt motor. There's a normal voltage and not a problem. Twice normal voltage. And oh, it's not dead yet. Whatever's happening is happening inside the motor, it's not happening here. Because our output voltage is still steady. That it did? No. Nope. 
Maybe there's overcurrent protection or something because it's. Pretty sure we've killed it this time because not a bit of life out of it. It's not too surprising we did have it at like 30 or 32 or 3 amps I think or 32 or 3 volts. So there you go. Oh. Never mind we didn't kill it. Well there you go that's the little uh, boost converter. Uh, it's a pity we didn't uh, managed to get the motor to its destruction point I guess there's some sort of uh, overcurrent protection or something in it but still you seen that we were able to uh, produce about uh, oh, was it like two two and a half amps at uh, like 22 23 volts so you know this thing is fairly capable of uh, producing the power uh, it's rated for a little bit more than that but still uh, you know 45 50 watts of power is pretty impressive from a little module and it doesn't even seem to have got all that hot doing that so i'd say that's a pretty good little module if you wanted an adjustable supply for testing anything testing any kind of motors or anything we need an adjustable voltage you know this is gonna be fit to deliver the current and uh, the voltage seems to be stable you've seen up there that uh, we all the whole time had a nice steady output there was no ripple and you would have seen it on the on the oscilloscope but yeah i definitely recommend uh, this module um, it's cheap and if you're looking for an adjustable power supply i can't really see how you get much better i mean it even has the output voltage uh, on the display here so you know what you're doing you can just plug in your lipo here and adjust to whatever voltage you need for your test whether you're testing a motor or testing a circuit it seems to have a stable dc output the whole time so yeah seems like a good module to me i got this one from ic station so uh, there'll be a link below in the description if you want to get one yourself you can uh, check it out on their website there and uh, yeah definitely recommend it so that's all i have for this video thanks very much for watching and i hope i'll see you in the next one